Rubber tired gantry crane. That's a mouthful. Big equipment with a big name and a big job. Rubber tired gantry cranes are efficient machines that are an important part of terminal operations. RTGs are also known as Transtainers, which is a registered trademark of the Paseco Corporation. But what exactly is an RTG? It's a mobile diesel electric bridge crane that is used for moving and transferring containers. RTGs work in specifically designed areas of a container yard. They may also load and unload containers to and from rail cars. RTGs share certain characteristics with two other pieces of equipment that you will see on the marine terminal. The shoreside container gantry crane and the straddle carrier. The shoreside container gantry crane is much larger than the RTG and is used only for loading containers to and discharging containers from ships. It is mounted on rails and will only be found on the dock. While both hoist containers with a spreader in a similar manner, the RTG has a wider range of movement because it can travel on its rubber tires. The RTG is also similar to the straddle carrier, or strad for short, but differs in a few ways. The RTG is larger than a strad, which can span only one container. RTGs can span several container rows. A strad can only lift a container up and down, while the RTG can move a container up and down and forward and back over rows of containers. This forward and back movement is called trolleying. Unlike the RTG, the strad can work in more than one area of the terminal. For instance, strads can deliver containers to or receive containers from the shoreside container gantry crane, while the RTG has a designated area just for its own use and never approaches a ship. This designated area where the RTG operates is referred to as the pad. The pad is a specially designed area of the terminal where the work surfaces have been reinforced to sustain the weight of stacked containers as well as the RTG. Terminals usually have more than one pad and they're typically lined up side by side and end to end in a grid pattern. Each pad is made up of the container stack, two travel runways and the truck lane. The container stack consists of containers stored end-to-end -end and in rows approximately three to six wide, depending on the RTGs in use. Each row can be from three to over 60 containers long, determined by the terminal configuration. Depending on the RTG used, each row can be up to six containers high. Rows are organized parallel to each other. Stacking containers squarely, corner to corner, is extremely important here, since a misaligned container can affect the positioning of the containers above and beside it. Every pad has lane markings to indicate the runways on which the RTG travels when performing its functions. These paths run parallel to the container stack. The term used to describe the left and right parallel movement of the RTG along the runways is called gantrying. Gantrying is also known as long travel. The truck lane is located on one side of the pad between one runway and the stack. The truck lane is clearly marked to indicate where trucks will pull in to receive or deliver a container. RTG wheels should never cross those lines. RTGs must remain on the reinforced runways to avoid sinking in the asphalt truck lanes. Some RTGs are equipped with an automatic shutoff sensory device that stops the machine if it comes too close to an object or vehicle. But you should never rely on this device to keep you and others safe. You've learned that RTGs can gantry left and right on the runways but they can also turn their wheels 90 degrees and travel. This movement is called cross-travel. RTGs cross-travel so they can move to work other pads. This feature makes the RTG both practical and efficient. In order to cross-travel or gantry, you'll need to select the proper steering mode. 
RTGs have two steering modes that are changed using the steering mode selector switch located in the cab. The first steering mode is zero degrees, sometimes called the normal mode. This setting allows the RTG to gantry. The second steering mode is 90 degrees, sometimes called the transverse travel mode. This setting turns the wheels 90 degrees, which allows the RTG to cross travel. The turning areas for the RTG are at the end of the stack at lanes called intersections. Intersections are where the RTG can turn its wheels 90 degrees and travel at right angles to the stack. While some RTGs are capable of turning around 360 degrees, this is rarely done. One other area where RTGs work is the rail yard. Just like the pad, the work surface at a rail yard where RTGs operate must be reinforced to handle the weight of the RTG and stacked containers. Runways and truck lanes are also clearly marked at the rail yard. Like in the container yard, RTGs must remain on the reinforced runways. RTGs can be as tall as 85 feet. The main frame of the RTG is composed of two large main girders with leg columns at either end. The leg columns are identified by their location, the right front leg column and right rear leg column, and the left front leg column and left rear leg column. The front and rear right leg columns are braced at the bottom by the right sill beam and the front and rear left leg columns are braced at the bottom by the left sill beam. An integral part of the crane is the diesel alternator engine. Since the RTG is mobile and cannot be plugged into power cables while operating, it must supply its own electrical power. This power supply comes from the diesel engine which can be located above or below one of the sill beams. The electrical equipment panel or electrical equipment room controls the electrical power and can be located on the same side as the engine above the sill beam or above the opposite sill beam. Wheel assemblies, known as wheel trucks or bogies, support the entire structure of the RTG. Wheel trucks house the tires. RTGs can have from 4 to 16 tires, up to 4 per wheel truck, which are equally distributed on either side of the crane. The four-wheeled type, that's one wheel per corner, is being phased out in favor of more advanced models. The operator's cab is positioned high on the crane. To reach the cab, you will climb up the access ladder and stairways and walk along the work access platform. The RTG's cab has been designed to give you maximum visibility. Windows allow you to see in many directions, even below. The cab is where you will carry out the movements and functions of the RTG, such as gantrying, trolleying, hoisting, lowering, and spreader adjustments. Hoisting is the term for the raising movement of the spreader. Trolleying is the movement used to position the spreader over a container. When an RTG trolleys, the cab and spreader move forward and back between the right leg columns and the left leg columns. Trolley is also the name of the mechanism that allows the cab and spreader to move along the top girders of the RTG. The cab and the spreader are suspended from the trolley mechanism, with the spreader slightly forward of the cab. The spreader is the part of the RTG that engages, lifts, and moves containers. It is suspended from the trolley and raised and lowered by wire hoist ropes. Motors power the hoist drums around which the wire hoist ropes are wound. The wire hoist ropes are let out or brought in depending on whether the spreader is being lowered or raised. The spreader consists of several components. Spreader beams retract and extend to adjust to the size of the container, which can be 20, 40, or 45 feet long. Flipper arms are located at each corner of the spreader, one flipper per corner. They're used to guide the spreader onto a container. The pairs of flippers on each end of the spreader are operated separately. 
twist locks are also located on each corner of the spreader. These mechanisms fit and lock into the upper four corner fittings on a container. The spreader is adjustable in other ways besides retracting and extending. These other adjustments allow for flexibility when engaging containers. List is when the spreader tilts to one side. List controls allow the spreader to correct this tilt. Trim controls allow the spreader to adjust for the container's position. Skew is an adjustment to allow the spreader to engage a container that is out of alignment. Typically, the spreader can be rotated plus or minus five degrees to make fine adjustments before landing on a container. This may be necessary if containers are not properly aligned parallel to the crane when stacked or when a truck is not properly aligned. When operating an RTG, you must know its limits, such as lifting capacity. Lifting capacity is the safe working load that the RTG can handle. This capacity is clearly marked on the machine. Never exceed the rated capacity of the RTG. In addition, wind speed limits are set for the safe operation of the RTG. Because there are several manufacturers of RTGs, each model will vary from another. You will be trained on the particular model that you will operate. Read and familiarize yourself with the operator's manual and manufacturer's recommendations. Knowing your machine will greatly enhance safety and efficiency.